Ha lachema anya. This is the bread of affliction which our ancestors ate in the land of Egypt. That all those who are hungry come and eat with us. Thus begins the tale, the unique tale, the tale of the Seder, that ancient family ceremony in which Jews the world over joined in a living an event that took place some 30 odd centuries ago. I am Elie Wiesel. Like most Jewish children, I especially loved the Passover holiday. The Seder transformed us. My father became a king, my mother a queen. But a lifetime separates me from the child I once was. It's not that I love Passover any less now, but I do love it differently. Now I love it for the questions it raises, the compassion it evokes, the memories it keeps alive, and its challenge to children to ask to ask questions. What I particularly love is the idea that all over the world, Jews perform the same rituals tonight. We invoke the same images, we eat the same matzah, we sing the same songs, and together we remember a turning point in our history. The book we read from this evening is called the Haggadah, a Hebrew word meaning the telling of the tale. Tonight, Jewish law commands us to retell the story of the Exodus from Egypt, a story that belongs to all of us, a story of freedom and a story for hope. And so, let us start together. The Haggadahs. <laughs> Grandpa? Mm -hmm. Did you have Seders when you were a little boy? Oh, yes. And my grandpa had Seders when he was a boy. And his grandpa, and all the grandpas before him, too. How you doing, Jenny? Okay. Yeah. Mom, how do you know what goes on the Seder plate? Grandma taught me. Now I'll teach you. Did you know the entire story of Passover is told right on this plate? It is. Each food is a symbol of the holiday. The shank bone is placed here. The shank bone represents the Paschal lamb, which the Jews offered to God at the Holy Temple in Jerusalem. Where does the egg go? The egg is placed here. The egg in its roundness symbolizes the cycle of life. What's next? Next is maror. Maror is the bitter herb which reminds us how bitter it was to be Pharaoh's slaves. Get a spoonful of charoset. Charoset represents the mortar which our ancestors used in building the pyramids. Parsley or karpas comes next. Why parsley? Parsley stands for spring and hope and renewal. It's beautiful. So, can we eat now? Wait, not yet. There is an order to everything tonight. The Hebrew word seder means order. I found them. Yes. Now we can begin.
Daddy. <laughs> Grandma, let me help you with the candles. Oh, I would love it, Anna. Baruch atah Hashem, Baruch atah Hashem, Elokeinu melech olam, Borei pori hagafen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, who creates the fruit of the vine. Amen. And now... It's time to eat? <laughs> not yet, Michael. It's time to dip parsley in salt water as a way to remember the tears of our ancestors. Boruch ato Hashem Elokeinu melech olam borei pori ha'adama. Blessed are you, Lord our God, who creates the fruit of the earth. Amen. Daddy, what now? Now, I'm going to break the middle matzah. This bigger piece is the afikoman. I'm going to save it for last because this will be the very last thing we're going to eat tonight. What's going on? How did I get here? Watch where Daddy hides the afikoman. If we find it, then I'll give us presents for it. How come? Because he needs it to finish the Seder. Since the afikoman is so important, I should probably put it someplace safe. Hey, wait a minute. Why am I going someplace else? Let's see now. Now, let's see. Where was I? Oh, yes. Oh. This is the bread of affliction, which our ancestors ate in the land of Egypt. Let all those who are hungry come and eat with us. You mean like people who are really poor and don't have enough to eat? They should share in the Passover meal with us? Yes. When I was your age and living in the old country, we were never without a stranger at the Seder. I remember going from one synagogue to another one, house of study to another, looking for a stranger with whom we could share the Seder. On Passover Eve, you know that the poor and the uprooted were the most sought after and the most beloved of guests. In some towns, before Passover, Jews showed their charitableness in yet another way. One by one, they would enter a room in the community house. There they would find a plate filled with money. Those who had money left some. Those who needed money took some. No one knew how much was given or how much was taken. This way, those who needed money didn't feel embarrassed or ashamed. Does everybody understand what Grandpa was talking about? Yes. And now for my favorite part of the Seder, the four questions. Who is the youngest? Hmm? It's okay, Michael. You start. We'll all help. All right. Why is this night different from all other nights? On all other nights, we eat either leavened or unleavened bread. Why in this night do we eat only unleavened bread? On all other nights, we eat all kinds of herbs. 
why on this night do we eat only bitter herbs? Shebehol halelot ein anu matbelin avilu pamechat avilu pamechat halayla ze halayla ze shetei beani halayla ze halayla ze shetei beani. On all other nights, we need not to dip our herbs even once. Why on this night do we need to dip twice? Shebechol halelot anuachin ben yoshvinu ben misubin ben yoshvinu ben misubin halayla hazeh halayla hazeh kulanu misubin halayla hazeh halayla hazeh kulanu misubin. On all other nights we eat sitting or reclining. Why on this night must we all recline? All right. These are very good questions. And we will answer them by telling a story that happened a long time ago. We were all slaves to Pharaoh in Egypt. It was a time of misery for the children of Israel. We were forced to work day and night, making bricks, hauling stones, and building cities for the cruel Pharaoh. Then, Pharaoh became even more wicked and he ordered that every newborn Jewish boy be thrown in the Nile. Families were torn apart. What happened then, Daddy? Well, God saw our suffering, and he delivered us with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Had God not brought forth our ancestors out of Egypt, then we, our children, and our children's children might still be slaves to Pharaoh in Egypt. Go ahead, Dad. You continue the story. And so God decided to punish Pharaoh with ten plagues. Wait a minute. What about Moses? Isn't he part of this story? Of course he is. But by mentioning him only once, the Haggadah is stressing that it was God, not man, not even a man as great as Moses who freed us from slavery. And now... It's time to eat? Not yet. First, we have to recite the ten plagues. And as we recall each plague, we spill a drop of wine. Why? To show our compassion for the Egyptians. You know, wine or grape juice symbolizes joy. And with each drop that we spill, we give up a little bit of our joy. Dum. That's when all the water in Egypt turned into blood. Svardaya. Then there were frogs jumping all over the place. Kinim. Next, all the dust in Egypt turned into lice. People were itchy all the time and scratching didn't help. Aro. Suddenly wild beasts showed up, biting, chasing, and scaring everyone. Dead. All the animals that belonged to the Egyptians got sick and died. Shame. Then they all broke out in boils. That really hurt. Bara. Balls of hail mixed with fire started falling. It came down so hard that it even shattered trees. Arbe. Huge swarms of locusts with teeth like lions ate up all the grass and all the leaves on all the trees, and there was nothing green left growing in all of Egypt. For three days, the sun, the moon, and the stars disappeared. It got really dark. The darkness was so thick, you could touch it. At midnight, the angel of death came and struck down every firstborn Egyptian son. Even Pharaoh could stand it no more. He told the Jews to take whatever they could carry and leave Egypt forever. And so, the people of Israel gathered their possessions, including the bread they were making, which didn't have time to rise, and so it remained flat, like this matzah. Oh, okay, I get it. When the children of Israel reached the Red Sea, they suddenly heard hoofbeats behind them. Pharaoh had changed his mind and sent his army to stop the Jews. You can imagine how our people felt, trapped between Pharaoh's army and the sea. 
Then Moses raised his staff and a miracle happened. The Red Sea parted and our people crossed safely to freedom. What happened to Pharaoh's army? How come they didn't follow? They did follow, but the sea closed up and Pharaoh's army drowned. But we were free? Yes. Can we eat now? No. Now we're going to sing. Ilu hotsi hotsi anu hotsi anu mi mitzrayim velo asavahem shvatim dayenu day dayenu day dayenu day dayenu 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 Ilu natan natan lanu natan lanu. Shabbat v'lo kervanu l'pnei har sinai Dayenu, day dayenu Would have been enough, Dayenu, just to sing this song. But now it's finally time to eat. Boruch ato Hashem Elokeinu Melech Olam Asher Kitshanu B'Mitzvotav Vitzivanu Al Achilat Matzah. Boruch ato Hashem Elokeinu Melech Olam Asher Kitshanu B'Mitzvotav Vitzivanu al Achilat Maror. Amen. I wish I'd been part of it. That was delicious. And now we need the afikoman. All right. But where is the afikoman? I'm here, over here. Please come and get me. This book is heavier than it looks. Hey, mm. I know where it is. I'll get it. <laughs> What do we get in return? Well, we can't finish the Seder without the Afikoman. So, there you go. Yes. First, we must say our thanks to God for our meal. Baruch Atah Hashem. Blessed be God whose food we have eaten, who sustains the entire world, and by whose goodness we live. We thank you for liberating us from Egypt, for redeeming us from the house of bondage, and for teaching us your laws. May we find favor in your eyes, and let us all say. Amen. Okay, Anna, you know what we do now. This is the cup for the prophet Elijah, who mysteriously visits every Seder on this night, bringing hope to all those who are in despair. Anna and Michael, would you please go open the door for him? One day, Elijah will come to stay, and on that day, he will accompany the Messiah to Jerusalem. 
Now, before we all sing Chad Gad Ya, I have one more question I'd like to ask. Why do we do this every year, year after year after year? It's remembering who we are. Mm -hmm. This story happened to us, to our family. If we don't tell it over and over, we might forget it. And so we come to the end of the Passover Seder. We end with the hope that next year, when we gather again, people everywhere will be free. And here we are, concluding the Seder with Chad Gadia, a beautiful song, which is not just about a father who buys a goat for his child. It's a song about God's creatures destroying each other. It may be a puzzling way to end a joyous meal, but one that's fraught with meaning. The song of Chad Gadia reminds us that in Jewish history, all creatures, all elements, all events are connected. The goat and the cat, the fire and the water, the slaughterer and the redeemer, they are all part of the story. Let me tell you the most important verse of the Seder. And you should tell your child on that day. This is the essence of our tradition. What do we mean by tradition? The Hebrew word for tradition is masora, which comes from the word limsor, to transmit, to share, to communicate. We must communicate what we have learned from those who have lived before us. It is my duty to tell my child, not only my story, but his as well, the story of our people. Sometimes stories are sad. Still, it is important to tell them and retell them, to live them again and again, this year and next, when we shall meet again around the Seder table.